Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be having some fun with some Distress Oxide inks, some new products from our June release, and we are going to be creating some Infinity Oceans. It's a really fun design where we're going to kind of let the design go off the side of the card. But before we do that part of it, we're going to create some really fun backgrounds with Distress Oxide inks. So I have some blue color inks to create water for our card design since we want to create some oceans for the stamps that we're going to be adding. And we're going to be doing a technique that Tim Holt shared at Creativation, and I absolutely love this technique. I have been making backgrounds like crazy using this, and I just have so much fun with it, so I wanted to create a video today sharing how I do the water backgrounds. So for this first panel, I have three different colors of Distress Oxide inks. I have Salty Ocean, Peacock Feathers, and Mermaid Lagoon, and I've just smushed those into my craft mat, and I'm adding water directly on top with my Distress Sprayer. Now I have a piece of white glossy alcohol ink cardstock. This is not Yupo paper, it's just the glossy white cardstock. And I'm dipping this into the different Distress Oxides. And I'm just kind of pressing the panel down into the ink and water and kind of rotating it and moving it around to really spread out the different colors on the background panel. And I'm just doing this until I have it completely covered. So you can see there I have a nice blend of the different colors. And then I'm going to come in with my heat tool and I'm going to completely dry this. So that is the first thing you want to keep in mind when doing this technique. With Distress Oxide, you don't want to keep adding more wet into wet because it's just going to all blend together and end up giving you um, a lot of different colors that you don't really want. It's going to end up looking muddy and messy. What you need to do is you need to make sure that every layer is completely dry before adding the next layer. And what that does is it allows the color to layer on top of each other. So Distress Oxides layer beautifully as long as you remember to dry each of them in between completely before adding new color. And actually I find that the more layers of color you add, the more this technique really brings out a lot of awesome colors at the very end. So I did this one I think about maybe five times. I just kind of added the color, dried it, went in with more color, and then kept drying it. And what I really like to do when I'm doing this technique is I like to let the color kind of start to dry up on the craft mat. So you can see I'm not adding any additional water. I'm just pressing that panel back down into the color that we already have there. And since it doesn't have as much water anymore, it's kind of giving us a more defined look on the panel. So you can see that we have this smaller little detail. It's not as blended and it doesn't kind of blend together as much. So it just gives us a lot of really cool patterns in the background. And in addition to your heat tool, you can also use a paper towel to help dab up some of that extra water, especially if you get some really large areas where you have quite a bit of water that's not drying. So for this one here, this is going to be my lighter one. So you can see there I have a really light color, and it's going to end up looking like the card on the left, which has the really cool scallop circle around it. It's going to have that vibrant color when we are finished with it. So just hang tight. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to create a second background that we're going to use for the second card, but for this one, I want to introduce a fourth Distress Oxide color to add a little bit more of a darker contrast to this one. So I'm once again doing the exact same thing. So I did speed this one up a little bit. I just added my Oxide colors onto my craft mat and I'm just adding the panel and kind of pressing that into the color with the water. And I'm just doing this repeatedly and making sure I'm drying each time I've added new color. I'm making sure that's fully dry before I go in with more color. Now this time I added some blueprint sketch into the design and you can kind of see it right now there's a little bit of that purpley blue contrast but when I put it on the first time I really watered it down so it is blending quite a bit into the background. So right now it's adding a little bit more color but not as much as I was going for so we will add even more as we continue to add the color here. So I'm just continuing to add to this panel. I did this one quite a few times. This one I did a lot more layers than the first one. And right now I'm still using that same ink that's on my craft mat. Like I mentioned before, I like to use it when it's starting to dry to really get that defined look to the panel. So it's a lot smaller, you get more concentrated areas, and it just adds a lot of texture and definition. So this is where I kind of decided this panel is kind of looking the same as the first one and I wanted more contrast. So I put some more of that blueprint sketch onto my craft mat and you can see this time when I do the layering that blueprint sketch is really standing out on top of the other color. Now as I dry this it's turning a little bit cloudy and the color is kind of disappearing into the panel. But when we add the glaze which is the cool part of this technique it's going to bring this panel to life and it's going to have so many beautiful vibrant colors. 
So this is where the magic happens. This is my favorite part of this technique. This is micro distress glaze, and it's just a glaze that you can use to kind of seal a project that you've used with distress inks. I'm taking my ink blending tool, and this fits perfectly into the glaze bottle, and I'm just kind of tapping it in there and kind of gave it a little twist just to add some of that glaze to the foam on the ink blending tool. And now I'm going to start to add this to the panel. So you don't need a lot of the glaze. This is going to last you forever. But as you add the glaze to the panel, what it does is it takes that cloudy look that we have and it kind of brings it to life. It kind of takes away the cloud and brings all of these vibrant colors from all of the layers that you've added onto this panel. And it gives you this beautiful, bright finish with all of the different colors coming through once you add the glaze. So you can see on the left side here, as I start to add the glaze, you don't see a lot of different color variation. But as the glaze goes on top, not only does it make it shinier and brighter, but it brings all of those bottom layers that you can't even see right now to the surface and really shows you how beautifully all of these colors blended on the panel. I love trying new products and different techniques and I love when I find one that I really enjoy doing and this is definitely one of those. I just think it is so neat to see all of this color come through when you add the glaze. And I really hope you can kind of pick up on screen as I'm doing this how I'm going from that cloudy look with not a lot of color to this vibrant finish with all of these different layers coming through to the surface. You can kind of see there side by side. I have that cloudy finish and then I have that really bright color. So I did zoom it in so I have it pretty close so that you can kind of see the transition as I'm doing it. And this one here turned out so good with the blueprint sketch. I love the contrast of that bright royal blue purpley color against all of those aquas and other colors underneath. So I'm just going to finish this one here and I didn't have add any extra glaze to my blending tool. That was just one little dip in that glaze bottle. So you can see that this is going to last you forever. Um, I've done many, many panels with my distress glaze that I just used on screen and it barely looks like I've even touched it. So it's just a really fun technique and I really hope you'll give it a try if you haven't already. And definitely experiment with different colors because there are so many beautiful color combinations. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work on the rest of the card. This is where we're going to create our infinity oceans. So I have two different dies here. I have the linked circle chain frames and I also have the stitched hexagon dies. And I've taken both of these to my die cutting machine and I've die cut them from a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white cardstock panel. For the chain link fence there, you can use that piece if you wanna add it back in. But for the purpose of what I'm creating, I didn't wanna have any extra pieces to fiddle around with. So I just set those aside and I'm just going to be using the panel pieces where we've die cut the openings. And I've made sure that when I die cut both of these that I have them going off of the edge of the panel. And that's what's going to give us that infinity look where we have the ocean and it doesn't really have an end because it's going to go right off the edge of the card. So now I'm just deciding which of the panels I want to use with the front panel that we've die cut. So I decided to use the darker bolder color with the hexagon piece and the more muted color with the circle scallop. So I'm just making sure that everything is going to fit nicely together. And the card base for each of these is just a white standard A2 size card base. I'm using the new Beach Buds and Gill Friends stamp sets to create the characters that we're going to add to our oceans. And I did do all of the stamping and die cutting off camera just to save some time. It was just some basic Copic coloring since the images are rather small. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to assemble the cards. For both of the cards, I'm adding the distress panels directly to the card base, and then I'm going to add the piece that we've die cut over top with foam adhesive. I really like the look of having that dimension on the outer piece kind of surrounding the ocean, and I really think it adds to the overall look of the card. You just want to make sure that you have your foam adhesive all the way around to the very edge to really give that a lot of support and make sure that it doesn't sag down onto the card. So I completely covered the back of these panels with my foam adhesive. When I added them to the cards, I have each of my oceans going a different direction. And then I stamp sentiments onto some sentiment strips that I die cut from the hearts in a row horizontal dynamics. So when I stamped and die cut all of these images, I really didn't have designs in mind. I just kind of picked out the images that I thought would work in these areas that I've die cut. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take all of the images and I'm going to kind of just move them around and kind of get an idea of where I want to position them onto both of these card fronts. So at this point, I'm not adhering anything down. I'm just kind of moving everything and getting a design in mind. And then I will go in with my tape runner and I will add all of the pieces on. Now for the little hexagon one there, I did add the fish kind of overlapping the edge of the card. And I will trim that down so that it fits perfectly on there. 
But I love the look of having the fish kind of swimming onto the card where they kind of go right off the edge with that infinity ocean. I added the sentiment strips to the bottoms of each of the card designs and I used one of the larger images on each of the cards to kind of go with the sentiment strip and kind of had them overlap off of the main panel on the front and into that ocean area. So it just kind of pulled the scenes together and really gave everything a cohesive look. So I'm just going through on the second card here and I'm finishing adding all of the pieces onto the card. You can definitely use foam adhesive on any of these pieces if you want as well. I decided to keep them all flat, but they would look great with dimension too. And then the last touch I want to add to this is I'm using some Nuvo Crystal Glaze and I'm adding it to all of the bubbles that I've added to both of the oceans just to give them a little bit of shine and dimension. And that is going to finish our Infinity Oceans using Distress Oxides and Distress Glaze. So thank you so much to Tim Holtz for sharing this awesome technique with everyone. I thought it was such a great way to use these products and I love the final result. I hope you will give it a try and I hope you got some ideas from today's video. As always, I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in another video soon. Thanks so much for watching.